is the Momotion Lawn Sweeping Mower. Yes, lawn sweeping, which means it has an actual basket. I don't have it yet, but you can install a basket on here. So when it's mowing the lawn, it actually picks up the grass and puts it into the basket. Then using an app, you can have it go and dump this in a certain spot in your lawn. On top of that insane feature that no other robot lawnmower has, perimeter wire free, okay? Meaning there's no wires to install. You basically just drive this thing around your yard like an RC car, set up the perimeter, and then this will do everything inside that perimeter. It'll mow it, it'll mow in straight lines. You can see that I have the lines already here from my Luba. This is a Yucca, but I also have a Luba as well. You can have multiple zones. You get a front zone and a back zone. You can have it cut the front and then you can have it cut the back. You have it cut two different days. You can have it cut the front and back in the same day and have it bridge all within the app. The amount of features in here is insane. So let me just quickly rattle them off. Uh, 3D vision, which basically, basically means it has cameras all over it, which will allow it to go around obstacles. Honestly, my favorite feature is that this can actually patrol your yard. So it has a camera on the front. When you're away, have this drive to a spot in your yard and you can see it in real time. So it's basically like a little security yard, security guard for your backyard. Designs in your lawn. So you can have this actually put like an M in your, in your yard or a heart for maybe Valentine's Day and things like that. So we'll get into some of those features a little bit later. Let's get this thing set up. Now, this is the base needs to be put somewhere in your yard and plugged in. So we will go through and set this all up. Um, this thing will go out, mow your lawn, and when it needs to be recharged, it'll come back and recharge itself and go back. So this is sort of like the base. This is kind of like the satellite. This is what controls the robot, okay? So we will set this up a little bit later. There are some poles. These poles are what hold this up. And I have the Luba. And these are definitely upgraded and different than what I have now that currently works. Other little things down here, we have an extra set of blades, which is very nice. Oh, look at that. This gets into really tight corners. And I think the reason, the way it does it is it has these back two wheels that spin kind of like a zero turn or like a tractor, right? And then it has a single wheel up front. I haven't, it's the first time that I'm looking at this, but yep, there's a single wheel up here. And this allows it to really get into tight spaces, get in there, turn around. At the cutting wheels are a little different than what I'm used to. Um, I like this metal here. This actually protects the blades. My Luba doesn't have that. You can see each wheel has three blades. They're able to move around, okay? If these were stationary, like let's say they couldn't move, you would, you're more likely to damage the blade. When they're able to move like this, they can kind of move out of the way and it causes less damage to the blades. Now the blades are double-sided, so you can actually remove the screw from here, flip this blade around, and use this hole. So that's pretty cool. You basically have double the lifetime in these blades. Blades are extremely easy to remove. I can see that they upgraded to like Phillips head. It's got a very smooth coating down here. Now this coating is supposed to keep grass from sticking. Grass, when it gets cut, turns into like glue. I'm not sure why, but they say that this is all coated to keep the grass from sticking. These cutting wheels are made out of plastic still. And the ones on my Luba are also made out of plastic. Don't have an issue with them. If we look on the sides, we do have rub, rub strips. This does get very into very tight corners. So this will rub against your fence. So if we look on the top, we have a camera. We have a rain sensor, I believe. So you can actually have this mow in the rain or outside the rain. We have some buttons up here. I'm not sure what they do yet. We have a stop button. This is just a mass button to stop it if it's doing something you don't like. I do have my Luba that kind of lives right here. Um, you can see the charging station and everything. I was actually hoping that I could just put this thing into that and kind of swap it out, but the charging station is different, okay? This has these prongs, and I'll tell you that the Luba charges completely different. So if you're wondering if you could use the same basically docking station or charging station, that would be a negative. You cannot do that. The one thing I did notice with the Luba is all of the connections seem to be very high quality. Um, we're not dealing with like cheap. I think you're gonna find that they're gonna give you more things that you need depending on your setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of use a bag, keep all everything kind of together and organized. Like they give you extra screws and some tools. That's what I recommend, some kind of bag. Keep everything together. Or let's put the charger together, right? We gotta put like the kind of the docking station together. This is the docking station, all right? And Seems to be pretty self-explanatory. Okay, we'll turn this over. 
and you'll see there's three spots for screws right here. They obviously give you the screws, and this is why they included the screwdriver. So that's pretty cool. You only need three, but they give you four screws, which is very smart. In case you drop one, lose one, three screws in, extra one in the bag, like I said. You know what I'm gonna do? Actually, I'm gonna get this thing plugged in. This has got a cable. Like I said, I mean, these connections, look at these connections. It's like rubber, and the connections are very, very nice. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is while I set up everything else, I'm gonna get this thing, get some power to it, get it plugged in. Now the funny thing is I can't figure out how this thing charges. I assume, is it, um, I don't understand. Yeah, I guess we're shipping. They put this in there. Okay, there, that makes sense. And that's where those, that's where those um, prongs go in to charge. So we are going to, there we go. Now we got some lights on it. It's lighting up. We see like all kinds of things going on. I didn't even notice these were lights. I thought they were sensors. Okay, let's let that thing charge. Whoa. Now let's move on to the next part. This is the part that actually connects to the, to the satellites. So you can set this up one or two ways. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. My current setup is you have your docking station. You run power to the station. And then off the station, you can then run a wire and power your RTK, okay? That's the way I'm gonna do it. The other way you can do it is you can have your power running to your charging station. And then if you wanna put your RTK somewhere else, let's just say off of like a garage, off in the backyard, that's completely fine. They give you that option with this plug right here. So then this would plug into your RTK and power your RTK like over there, okay? So you have Two options. In my case, we're gonna plug it into the docking station. And I'm gonna use this stake ground, all right? So we just screw this into the bottom of the stake. And this connection, this is pretty neat. My other one doesn't do this. I guess you push this through here. And there's a slot right here where it comes out of. That's a pretty nice, it's very clean. Screw this on. Uh, this is a temporary spot for mine. Um, and that's been about two years now. So uh, this is gonna be temporarily here until I finally build something for this. My plan is to actually build it off of the shed, do some landscaping and make like a garage kind of thing for the Luba and the Yucca. Um, it hasn't bubbled up to the top of my priorities, um, but I'm gonna get there. Looking at this a little bit closer, again, you know, like I was talking about earlier, these things do move, okay? Anything brittle, will crack or break. So this is nice that they kind of have the ability to, to move, all right? Less likely to break. All right, so now we have to find a flat, a relatively flat surface. So I'm gonna pick this hill here because, you know, I think it'd be perfect. And it was actually the temporary spot that I put the Luba. Again, these are all temporary spots, but temporary is, I guess, in the eye of the beholder. I'm gonna put this one here. The next thing we need to do is we need to power this RTK. Like I said, I'm powering my RTK off of the charging station. Let's get this thing plugged in. Uh, Start charge. Again, I think it looks cool, like inside of plants like that. We're going to plug the RTK, the line from the RTK, into the charging station here to make a watertight. Again, all the connections are very, very high quality, very impressive. All right, now we can actually jump into the app. So we'll talk, start the Emotion app. Before I was even able to get there, it actually found the two devices. So it found the RTK and it found the Yuka. So I'll hit plus for the, the Yuka. And now it's doing a connection, I guess, between my phone and the Yuka. Oh, let's see. Okay, it connected to my house Wi-Fi, and now it shows up in my app. So that was pretty easy. Bluetooth connection successful. I don't know if I need to add the RTK. I'm assuming it's okay. Yep, now I gotta add the RTK, so that's that. So we'll just let it go through its thing, set up the RTK, and then we'll be off to the races. And while it's upgrading, we actually need to install this into here. Woo! Double RTK, double robot. So now uh, after it updated, kind of able to drive it around using the app. Let's bring it over here. Let's do it like a 180. I want to see how it... So that wheel, that wheel up front allows it to really rotate pretty good. And then basically the way it turns is this one spins this way and the other wheel spins the opposite and allows it to do very tight turns. 
basically donuts. Oh, jeez. It's got a windshield wiper. Start recharging. All right, I'm just gonna send it back to the charging station. Then we'll get into actually mapping this thing out. We're gonna go into the app and we are going to go into map and we are gonna click create and we're gonna create an area, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I am going to drive this around my yard and we're gonna create a perimeter, all right? And then it's going to use that perimeter to cut the lawn, all right? So we're gonna, now I'm gonna drive this around the perimeter of my lawn. your perimeter done you can also set up no-go zones so these are places you don't want it to mow so like around the shed and around here so you could just let the obstacle detection handle that but i've done it here before and the luba that i have has gotten stuck in here before um so i'd rather just set it up as a no-go zone and it's real simple in the app so all we do is we go to create and we just say no-go zone so what i gotta do is drive it to the no-go zone area and then once it's in the area we just go to no zone and start. So now what I'm gonna do is drive this around. So now I have my yard mapped out. We kind of see it right here. You can see the two yellow spots are actually the no-go zones. So that's this right here and this right there, okay? Inside the app, you can also set something up, something up called a bridge. So let's say you had like a lawn over there and a lawn over here and you needed it to drive like over maybe a driveway to get to it. You can also set that up in the app. It's called a bridge connected. This does have the ability to have a sweep basket on the back and that would be called a, like a dump zone. So in the app as well, what you can have it do is go to a certain part in your yard after it fills up that basket and dump it, okay? Um, that'll be in other videos. I don't have the dump basket yet. That's gonna be out in like August sometime, but that's pretty cool. That's what really sets this thing aside from all the other robot lawnmowers. So it's going to recharge and it's just driving itself back to the recharging station. So let's see how this goes. Remember, I said this was supposed to be on flat surface. Oh, no, yeah, no, well, it gets right in there, no problem. Cool. So one of the features this has is you can put, you have designs in your yard. So what, what I wanna do is, we're gonna to go to create and we're gonna do a pattern, okay? And then inside here we can act, we can put like soccer balls, uh, letters. So I'm gonna put, I can't put family DIY TV, but I can put FDT for family DIY TV. Yeah, so we're gonna put FDT right there in the lawn. So on my map here, that's basically out here in this lawn, all right? So FDT, we do finish. So it looks like the pattern is part of the mowing. So you have to add it or, or remove it and it's always gonna be there. So I'm just gonna set this thing off and I'm only gonna have it do once. So I'm gonna have it go once, mow it, not sweep because I don't have the basket. Okay, so we'll turn that off. We'll do task speed of that, line spacing. I like to move this line spacing around so that it goes kind of over, a, it doesn't just stay in the same rut. So I'll, I'll play with the, the spacing and basically have it move over like an inch or so every once in a while. We'll do, um, for obstacle detection mode, we will do direct touch. Um, we'll do direct touch, okay? We'll do one lap around the perimeter. We'll go one lap around the no-go zones. Um, path order, I want perimeter first. And cutting angle is going to be zero. Now what we could do is we can do a preview and it'll actually show us what the lines are gonna look like. Um, and you see in my case, the lines are gonna be this way, which I like, okay? And I like that feature because you can play with the angles. Like I can move the angles like this and then I can preview it. And then the angles might be like this way, all right? And that's all the lines you'll have, okay? Now I know what I want. I now have a preview of what it's gonna be. It's gonna tell me it's gonna take 239 minutes. Yeah, man, maybe that seems like a lot of time, but I'm not doing it, okay? If it runs out of battery halfway through, it will just stop in the middle of the yard. It'll, it'll know that it's running out of battery. It'll know how far away it is from the charging station. And it'll probably around 15% of battery, it'll drive back and charge. Once it's done charging, it'll keep mowing along until the task is completely finished. So now I'm gonna set this off. Go, go, go. And then we'll kind of come back and check this That's thing out. Set up probably without making a video 
to setting up the perimeter to having it now mow my lawn. I think I've been out here for maybe an hour and a half, but that's making the video. If I wasn't making a video and I was just setting this up, you probably could have this all done with less than an hour. Uh, setting up the perimeter took maybe about 10 minutes. Setting up the no-go zones maybe took up another 10 minutes. So maybe like less than 20 minutes, 15 minutes uh, all together. This is pretty rugged. You can see where I have it back here. My grass is pretty bumpy and it has no problem because of these big wheels getting over all of these bumps. You know, this is a little more aggressive down here. In the middle of the lawn, it's not gonna obviously have an issue because this is all smooth. But if you had a lawn like this where you, you know, right at the edge of the woods here, it's a little bumpy, but it really has no issue. This also can handle a pretty steep slope. I'll put the angle up on the screen. I forget exactly how much it is, but if you have a steep yard, it can also handle that. Uh, so it is absolutely been pouring. So I brought the Luca inside. You can see it's wet. That's one thing to really point out. This thing is uh, water resistant. It could be left outside. This thing has been left in a storm for days. My lube has been living outside for years now. So the, the weather doesn't affect these things. That's where I'm going to end this video. Since I shot that original footage, I have received the sweeper kit, okay? Now, I'm not gonna really talk about the sweeper kit in this video, I'm gonna shoot a separate video. So I am able to find a coupon code or get a good affiliate link that will save you some money on this kit. I will put it down below in the description. So check down there. Also check the first pinned comment. If I'm able to find any kind of deal on this thing, I will put it there. Again, I'm Mike, found with TV. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Please leave that like button. Leave that like button. No, hit that like button. And I'm Yuka, robotic lawnmower. Now.